Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, or good morning, depending on where uh, you are. You are. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Kelvin Kampfer. I'm the co-PI for the project entitled Genetic Improvement of Dry Beans for Brookie Resistance uh, for uh, Southern Africa. And I'll be presenting on behalf of uh, quite a large group uh, that we have uh, working on this uh, project. Um, uh, as part of the introduction, uh, uh, our, the focus of the project is on uh, the common bean weevil, which is Acanthosilis uh, opteticus. It's the most uh, prevalent type of weevil uh, that we have in uh, Southern Africa, and um, it's responsible for major post-harvest uh, losses. And uh, uh, it also uh, leads uh, to the loss of uh, quality of the seed and also uh, uh, the germination ability of the seed. So it's a quite a devastating uh, pest uh, in terms of uh, uh, its impact on uh, uh, bean production in general in, uh, in Southern Africa. Uh, the project has uh, four objectives. The first objective is to develop and release brookie resistant bean varieties with good agronomic performance in uh, market classes that are prepared in Southern Africa, that's Malawi, Mozambique, and Zambia. Then uh, to use the existing modern breeding tools uh, to make the selection process more efficient. And uh, third objective is to determine the cooking time of the uh, breeding lines uh, with uh, brookie resistance. And the fourth objective is a capacity building one, which is to train the next generation of uh, bean breeders uh, in Southern Africa. So uh, to introduce the project team, we have uh, 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 Professor uh, 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 Juan, uh, Juan Osono, who's the, uh, the lead PI for the project and is based at uh, North Dakota State University. And then uh, we have uh, co-PI uh, 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 Dr. Hugh McLean, who's also at uh, NDSU in the US. Then we have uh, Carlos Urea, who's at University of Nebraska. And uh, then we have uh, Virginia Chisale, who's the bean breeder for the national program in Malawi, and uh, Celestina, who's the bean breeder for the national program in Mozambique and uh, myself, uh, Kelvin Kampfer, who's the bean breeder here at the University of Zambia. In terms of the countries that the project is focused on, uh, we are focused on the Southern African region, specifically working on in Malawi, Mozambique, and uh, Zambia. Uh, but despite us, uh, having, I mean, focusing on these uh, three countries, uh, we are hoping that uh, the outputs that will come out of this project or the impact of the project will kind of go beyond the Southern African region. Obviously, the brookie resistant lines that we develop will end up uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, part of those materials might end up with Barbara, which later on could be shared with um, uh, other countries that uh, fall within Pabra and beyond actually where Pabra operates from. So we are likely to have an impact beyond uh, these uh, three countries and the Southern African region. Uh, so a little bit of background uh, to the topic that we are working on. Uh, the pioneering work of uh, weevil resistance in common bean was uh, done uh, in GMAS uh, lab at uh, Oregon State University. And uh, in that work also there were other people were involved including Jim Beaver and uh, Paul Kusolo, who's now a professor at, uh, at uh, Sukoine uh, University in Tanzania. Uh, originally, there was no resistance for, weevil, for weevils within the primary gene pool of common bee. So uh, these guys who are really the trailblazers went outside the primary gene pool to go and look for that resistance and uh, bring it into Fasciolus vulgaris. And uh, they ended up uh, getting that uh, resistance from tepary bean, which is a sister species of uh, Fasciolus uh, vulgaris. And um, uh, they moved that resistance and even ended up uh, developing a common bean variety, which uh, possess uh, that resistance uh, to the brookies. And uh, there is the, uh, the, the publication uh, that accompanied uh, one of the varieties that uh, they released. So this is the, these are the guys who are the pioneers uh, 
of uh, of this uh, uh, research on the of introgressing or moving resistance from outside the primary gene pool uh, of common being and bringing it into 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 the primary gene pool. And now. Uh, the, one of the things that we were asking ourselves is uh, how transferable is this resistance and how stable is this resistance as you move it uh, in different genetic backgrounds? And uh, that question was uh, answered and the answer was yes, it's uh, transferable. Based uh, on the uh, research work that we had undertaken before we were awarded the project. And uh, there is a paper that uh, we published uh, together with uh, uh, Dr. Beaver, Currency and uh, James Kelly to demonstrate that indeed you can move around this uh, resistance, which is essentially conditioned by the APA locus on chromosome four, and they can be deployed in different market classes. And that we demonstrated as we transfer that resistance from one of the resistant lines which were developed by Paul Kusol and uh, Jim Myers into a land race, which is called uh, Solwezi here in Zambia. So once we had demonstrated that, we thought we were in a good position for us now to try and uh, deploy this resistance uh, widely in different uh, market classes of pins. So the, uh, that is kind of the foundation or the background to the, to the project. And, um, uh, the project is focused on uh, uh, on uh, introgressing this uh, weaver resistance, essentially deploying the APA locus in a in a variety of uh, market classes, including the pink motor, the purple uh, uh, motor, the red motor, and the sugar types. These are the market classes that are important and uh, are, 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 are in the major pin corridors of Southern Africa, corridors which are essentially the, 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 the routes or the paths uh, in which uh, beans is traded here in Africa. So how do we go about with the, uh, with the, with the screening for weaver resistance? We essentially use uh, quite a simple method. We have those jars, we put the beans there, then introduce the weavers and then assess them at 45 days after infestation and 65 days and uh, be able to determine uh, how many number of perforations. And based on that, we are able to assess uh, the resistance uh, or susceptibility of a variety to the weavers. So under this project, uh, what we did was now to cross these, uh, to, we, we had um, selected a number of parents mainly from the Andean diversity panel, where we had a better sense in terms of their superiority in agronomic performance and also their acceptability uh, in, the, in the countries that uh, we are working on. And those are the, genotypes that we crossed with the resistant line. And uh, out of uh, those crosses, we've developed a total of about uh, almost close to 2000 uh, breeding lines, which is just uh, a nine line shy, I mean, a uh, shy of 2000, which is the actual number is about 1991, but there are also other lines that we have not accounted for. So when you put together, we have a total of almost uh, more than 2000 of the breeding lines that we've developed. Um, by crossing these genotypes with the uh, resistant lines. And these are the genotypes that uh, we are now uh, screening. But we first had to screen these parents uh, to kind of check their resistance to the weavers and also included, uh, of course, the resistant parents. And uh, what uh, this uh, 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 graph is showing you is essentially the, the, the reaction of these uh, materials to the, to the weavers, that's the parents. Uh, not all the parents are good, but some of the parents. And what you see is there, the resistance checks, which is where we are getting our, our resistance, which has the APA locus uh, coming from a temporary, are quite resistant uh, uh, if you look at that, where the red line is the threshold. Whereas uh, the breeding line, uh, sorry, the, the other parents that we've used that are agronomically superior, but are quite susceptible to the weevils, you could see how, how badly damaged uh, they were based on this uh, scoring system that we have. So we, we were in a good position to not say, well, the resistant parents are behaving as uh, they should, and also the, the, the susceptible parents are, are also susceptible. And uh, we were now hoping to move this resistance from these uh, resistant checks now into the, into, the, into the parents. So what progress have we made to date? And um, we've made uh, quite uh, significant uh, progress. And um, uh, here I'm just depicting uh, a small sample 
that we got out of a cross of uh, the resistant and the ADP1, which is one of the genotypes that is very agronomically but very susceptible to weevils. And this is out of the screening that was done uh, uh, here at the University of Zambia. So you could see that we're able to recover uh, some genotypes that are the skull of, uh, 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 that are almost uh, very, uh, I mean, no perforations or very few perforations, but also we got quite a lot of lines that were susceptible. And, and the take home message from this is that yes, we are able to recover resistance in the backgrounds, in the genetic backgrounds of uh, materials that uh, 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 are preferred uh, here. Uh, however, we have a challenge that uh, the, uh, in terms of the low frequency of these uh, resistance uh, uh, progenies that we get out of here. And this has been a concern because even when you have uh, hundreds of these lines, you only recover a couple of these uh, materials that tend to be resistant. And uh, we previously reported about this uh, low frequency. It's not something that uh, uh, that uh, we are dis that we are we are discovering for the first time, but it's something that uh, we've also experienced uh, in our in our in our previous uh, research on uh, weevil resistance. This is now just to give you a sense of the market classes of the materials uh, uh, that uh, uh, that we have recovered, the ones that are resistant. Like you could see out of this cross of uh, 3A and ATP1, we've managed to recover these materials on, the, on your, on your right-hand side of your slide, line 13, 28, and 51, in quite variable uh, market uh, uh, classes. These have uh, superior levels of uh, resistance uh, to, to the common living weevil. In some cases, even a bit more resistant than uh, the resistant parent itself. So this is quite exciting for, for us. Uh, again, I, what I'm trying to show you here is just to give you further insights in terms of uh, how variable the, the, the seed types or the market classes in which we have succeeded to introduce uh, the weevil resistance. Some of these uh, market classes include the PEPO motor, which is a popular uh, market class for us uh, here in Zambia. So this has been uh, a, quite an achievement for us. And uh, these materials that are resistant together with the susceptible lines, we've planted them in our trials. What we are showing you there is an image of one of the nurseries that we have, which is at uh, Golden Valley Agricultural Research Trust, where we have uh, all these 1,991 that's both susceptible and resistant. We are also keeping the susceptible because we might need to use them for further genetic studies uh, uh, in our quest to develop molecular tools that could uh, be used to uh, and uh, to, to bring about efficiency in their selection for the APA locus. So these are uh, the materials that uh, we have this year uh, growing at GAT. We also have these materials at another location, which is uh, in uh, Malash in Pika, and uh, uh, again, uh, mainly for seed multiplication and also for uh, evaluating them for their agronomic performance. So all in all, we've been successful and uh, these materials that uh, we've identified out of our preliminary screening, we've uh, shipped them to uh, USA to Dr. Wano Sono, where they are going to be planted in their, I mean, for, for them to be evaluated for their agronomic performance. We've also shipped them to Mozambique and Malawi to Celestine and uh, Virginia for seed multiplication and uh, agronomic evaluation in those uh, countries. The other progress that uh, we've had is uh, in the form of capacity building in our national agricultural research system. Remember objective four of our project was to build capacity to develop, I mean, to train this next generation of uh, plant breeders here in Southern Africa. And uh, uh, we are quite excited on this front of the project because uh, we have uh, four uh, talented young women who the project is uh, training. We have uh, Maria who's currently doing our uh, MSc studies at uh, NDSU and um, uh, Modrin who's uh, uh, doing uh, MSc studies in plant breeding and seed systems here at the University of Zambia. And uh, uh, Maria and Modrin are from Zambia. Then we have Isabel who's also has joined my breeding program here at the University of Zambia doing a master's degree. She's from Mozambique. And then uh, Rebecca, who's uh, from Malawi, and uh, also uh, has joined, uh, has started our 
studies here at the University of Zambia in plant breeding and uh, seed systems. This is very exciting for us because these are talented young women and um, they eventually would be in some leadership position of uh, being research in their respective uh, countries. Uh, the Isabel and uh, Rebecca, they are already in Zambia and they have already started uh, their studies and uh, they didn't waste time. The moment they arrived, they hit the ground running. And here we're having Isabel who's from Mozambique helping us uh, with our inoculation for CPP in the greenhouse. And uh, they are currently doing their coursework. The other project activities that, um, uh, that uh, we are undertaking is essentially to develop uh, mac assisted selection for the APA locus. And this work is being anchored at uh, NDSU. And uh, Maria, she's the one, the student working on that under the mentorship of uh, uh, Dr. Wano Sono and uh, Phil McLean. Then we are going to undertake a cooking time evaluation based on the Matson cooker and on the on-farm conditions. And we are also uh, looking at the gender integration into the project. And uh, I just gave a presentation uh, on, uh, on that supplementary uh, grant that we have related to, to this. In conclusion, uh, we've uh, optimized the screening protocol here in Zambia, developed uh, a total of uh, close to 2,000 F7 breeding lines in diverse market classes. These have been screened for weaver resistance and we've identified uh, uh, lines that are resistant in very variable market classes. And the uh, seed of these uh, procure resistant lines have been shipped to our collaborators in the US, in Malawi, and also in Mozambique. And uh, here in, in Zambia, we are further multiplying the seed and uh, further screening these materials for weaver resistance and also for agronomic performance. And then uh, we, the, the four students, uh, who are female uh, being trained, uh, which is very important for building capacity and really to increase the participation of women in, uh, in, uh, in breeding, uh, which we struggle with uh, for us here in, uh, in Africa. So with that, uh, uh, I'll end my presentation here and uh, uh, I have several organizations to thank the USID, the Investor of Zambia, the IIM of uh, Mozambique, uh, Investor of Nebraska, NDSU, and uh, Michigan State, where the League Innovation Lab is hosted. With that, uh, thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are. I welcome you to this presentation entitled Screening Common Bean Breeding Lines for Brookhead Resistance. This will be a joint presentation by myself, Chinj Modrin, and Maria Maza. We can move to the next slide. Common bean is an important crop as it is a source of protein, iron, and zinc. Despite its importance, it's faced with major constraints, which are the abiotic and biotic stresses. Among the biotic stresses, we have the common bean weevil, Acanthus laidus subtectus, which is a predominant post harvest pest in all tropical bean producing regions. On my top right, the picture shows the common bean weevil that we are working with. We can move to the next slide. Common bean weevil can cause as much as 48 to 100% losses in common bean seed quality and quantity, depending on the susceptibility of the cultivar. The weevils attack both in the field as well as in storage. Hence, it's imperative to use resistant cultivars and breed for genetic resistant is the most environmental and cost-effective means to mitigate the losses. If you look at my right down peak, it's showing the, the, the beans that has been attacked by the weevils. Hence, if a variety is susceptible, this is what the damage the weevils can do. We can move to the next slide. The objective of this study was to introduce weevil resistance within Southern African preferred market classes of common bean. The image I'm trying to show here shows the six market classes that are of interest in this study. We can move to the next slide. A total of 596 advanced breeding lines from 10 populations were screened at the University of Zambia and in Nisanfo, that is the Northern Province of Zambia. 
The 10 populations were derived from 10 different crosses that were done at the University of Zambia. The study was conducted in a completely randomized design with two replications, both at Onza and, and in Nisanfu. AO3A and AO6B were used as our resistant checks, whereas Lukaka and Kablangeti were used as our susceptible checks. So these are the pictures I'm trying to show on my right. AO3A as our resistant parent and Kablangeti as our susceptible parent. Then the parameters that were assessed were percentage of damaged seed and perforations, the number of perforations on the 10th seed. We can move to the next slide. The slide I'm trying to show just shows the flow of activities when we are phenotyping for resistance to A optators. So in the first place, we need to have adult bean weevil, both the male and female. We need to have about 300 adult weevils, which are infested in 400 gram seed, so that we have a mass rearing of weevils that will be used to conduct the experiment. We expect to have emergence at 45 days. The seed for the experiment is first sterilized by putting it in the fridge for 48 hours so that we don't have any eggs or weevils before we do our actual screening. After sterilizing the seed, it's kept on room temperature for 24 hours. Then after 10 seeds are counted and placed in the 250 plastic bottle, then the 10 adult and six weevils are put in the bottle. Then they are incubated in the sectorium at 28 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 days. Thereafter, they are evaluated at 30, 45, and 60 days. At 30 days, we remove the initial 10 adult weevils that we had infested the seed with. Thereafter, screening starts at day 45 and at 60 days, where we score for the number of perforations on the 10 seeds percentage of damaged seed, as well as the number of image and outbroken. Hence, a seed with at least one perforation is considered to be damaged. The picture in the center, the one that has got a resistant line, as well as a susceptible line. For a susceptible line, if you look at the perforation, using the CR scale of one to five, if it has greater or equal to 16 perforations, it's considered to be susceptible. Whereas a resistant line, when it gets a score of one, it means it doesn't have it doesn't have any perforations. They need to be given a score of one to be considered to be resistant. This is what the picture in the center is trying to show. We can move to the next slide. There is the results that will be shown uh, are just one of the populations from the ten populations that we are screened where we had a total of 596 lines. So in this presentation, our results are focusing on the population AO-3A by ADP763. This is the screening at 60 days across the two locations. We had 123 lines that were screened. Out of the 123 lines, we had 11 lines that were resistant. They had a score of either one to two. Then we had one line that had the score of one, it didn't have any perforations. When it came to the parents AO3A, which is a resistant check, it had the score of two, which shows that it maintained the resistance. Whereas for the parent ADP763, it was susceptible and it got a score of five. So for the percentage of damaged seed, the population, had a range of zero to 100%. While we had 11 lines that had less or equal to 10 seeds damaged, and one line didn't have any of its seeds damaged. And we can see that the AO3A, which was used as a parent, a resistant parent, had a score of 20%, while the susceptible parent had a score of over 90%. When this population was screened at both locations, which is Misanfu and Unza, 23 lines were resistant only at Misanfu, and 11 lines were resistant only at Unza. Three lines were resistant at both locations. This graph is showing all the lines that were screened for the populations, and there were some lines 
that were resistant at Unza and were susceptible in Misanfo. Other lines were resistant in Misanfo and were susceptible at Unza, but there were some lines that were resistant at both locations. And this is quite interesting because it brings about, uh, it could be because of uh, different biotypes that exist in subpopulations. Uh, that's the reason why we saw a variation of these lines performing differently at both Unza and Misanfu. Out of 596 lines, 13 lines were identified to be resistant. And these lines uh, belong to the different 10 populations that were screened, and they, they belong to different market classes. The 13 resistant lines that were identified suggest that the resistant APA locus in AO3A that was derived or originating from Fasciolus actifolius has stable expressions in different genetic backgrounds. These results suggest that different breeding programs can use AO3A to deploy resistance to A optectus to, diff to different market classes. Interestingly, there were three super resistant lines that had no perforations at all and had a score of one. Whereas the resistant parent AO3A had perforations and had a score of two. The 13 lines out of 586 that were identified, identified as are consistent with what was previously reported that there's actually a low recovery rate of resistant lines to aeoptectus. And these results suggest that when breeding for resistance to aeoptectus, there is need to have a larger population. Right now, 1,991 breeding lines have been planted at Gad and in Pika in Zambia. And the 13 lines will be shipped to Malawi Mozambique and North Dakota State University, where these lines will be planted in the field to test agronomic performance and to validate a molecular marker that was previously developed. And the screening is still ongoing in Zambia. We'd like to acknowledge the USAID, Michigan State University for providing funding for this research. We'd like to further acknowledge NDSU the University of Zambia and Zari, where the research is being conducted. With this, we end our presentation. Thank you.